listen, I'm enjoying it, but Hastings. <laughs> and it's like, it's so clever. I did cry, but I like constrained it. Cause I was like, I've just done my makeup. Like this has to last until I finish the book tonight. So. <laughs> the scene in the end. Hello detectives, who's ready to solve some mysteries? <laughs> I'm figuring this out. I'm like Scooby and Shaggy, I'm solving a mystery. Hello friends, welcome. This week we are gonna be reading All Murder Mysteries. Let me hear you cheer, woo! <laughs> I like to do this vlog every November, like at least once a year, a week of just reading murder mysteries because they're my favorite thing. And I don't know, November, like I feel like October is horror. And I feel like November's mystery. I just feel like, you know, with like by the fireplace, like winter setting in, ooh, imagine being trapped in a stately home right now, solving a mystery. Mm -mm. <laughs> so yeah, in this vlog, we are gonna be reading All Murder Mysteries. I'm gonna have the best time ever. Like, I feel like <laughs> part of me just wants to read All Murder Mysteries forever, but you know, there's other books to read. So let's chat about what we're gonna be reading together in this vlog. Now, originally, I was gonna be reading Kill of a Certain Age by Deanna Ray Bond. I'm pretty sure I put this on this month's TBR Cluedo, but then just as I was about to start filming this, I was like, I don't think this is a murder mystery. And I don't think it is. And I've just made a massive mistake and now I'm easy. really annoyed. Take it easy. Like I asked my patrons on Instagram and I got various responses. This is like about assassins essentially, but I don't think any of them are murdered. It's like attempted murder mystery, but I've decided to like not read this. So sorry, TBR Cluedo. I have lied to you because this is not happening <laughs> anymore. So I put up a poll on my Patreon for my Team Lux and Aurora patrons of different books I know are murder mysteries for them to choose which one of them I should read. And pretty unanimously, The Twyford Code by Janice Hallett won the poll. So we're gonna be reading this. All I know about this one is it's to do with coding. Like I know it's all audio files. So the whole book is told through like voice notes, essentially. It's something to do with like, like a code in a children's book of a disgraced children's author and like our protagonist trying to solve the code from the book or something. Yeah, this was like pretty unanimously voted on, which I was surprised because like Ruth Ware was in there for the poll, but like everyone wants me to read the Twyford Code. So maybe it bodes well. Maybe I'm gonna love this. The Appeal by Janice Hallett. I prefer really not to, um, not to speak. I think I was harsh. I gave it a 3.5. It is more of a four. I gave it 3.5 because I was expecting it to be my favorite book of all time and it wasn't, but I feel like maybe I will have better luck with this one. Then I have been in such a mood to read Agatha Christie lately. I haven't read an Agatha Christie in a long time and I've spoken about, I've done a few videos lately where Agatha Christie's come up and I'm like, oh, I haven't read an, a Poirot in a, in a while, especially made progress in the series chronologically where I'm reading it. I've only read Death on an Art this year. It's been the only Christie I've read this year. So we're gonna make more progress in the series and we're gonna read Peril at End House. This is the next in the Poirot series. This is, how far am I in now? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, this is eight. Although I have skipped Black Coffee, which is like a play, but it's included here. So technically this is my seventh that I'm reading. I I've read Murder on the Orient Express and Death on the Nile, which are further in the series, but other than that, I've only read in the order. And all I know about this is that I think it's about a girl who someone keeps trying to kill her and Poirot wants to figure out what's going on. You know, Christie's books are just a comforting read. They're very short, so they're just easy to get through. So I feel like this will be a nice book to also break up the two new releases we're gonna be reading. And then finally, I think I will leave this to the end because like, I've just read Babel, by the way. Go check out the vlog if you haven't seen it because YouTube screwed me a little bit and like, the algorithm was like, girl, because <laughs> I missed a few uploads. So it's punished it, but go watch my vlog where I read Babel because, or Babel, sorry. <laughs> we don't need to get into the whole Babel Babel debate. I've spoken about it enough. You guys told me either was fine. So I've been saying either. Then some people have said, no, it's only Babel and you're embarrassing us. And I'm like, what is the truth? What is the truth? Anyways, that is my favorite book of the year. It's become my favorite book of the year. And this is the other book that I said earlier this year could become my favorite book of the year. And it is The Bullet That Missed by Richard Osman. This is the next in the Thursday Murder Club series. I'm quaking in my boots. <laughs> I don't mean to make her nervous that much. If you don't know, this is one of my favorite series ever. I've given the first two five stars. The first one was my favorite book that I read last year. I've heard a lot of people saying this is better than the second one. I did like the second one, but I didn't like, I mean, of course I loved it, but I didn't love it as much as I loved the first one. And I'm hoping I might love this as much as I loved the first one. So we'll see how it goes, but I am nervous to read this one. So we'll probably read this last and we will start with the Twyford Code. Why didn't you, why didn't you call? 
So many years has gone by But I think about you, about you all the time Looks like you're changing and all But why didn't you, why didn't you call? Okay, so I am halfway through the Twyfa code, but I thought since I was just using my Sirius Light, I would chat about them with you because they are very kindly sponsoring this video and I thought this would be a good time to chat because I've literally just been using it to read. I'm obsessed with this light. I'm obsessed with it. I've been speaking about it a lot, but I'm using it every night when I'm reading it. Tom has just started reading more lately and he's using it all the time. We're literally fighting over who gets to sit here, but I've been loving it. It makes reading at night so much clearer. I always thought, you know, I was a bit skeptical at first because I thought, oh, when I'm reading at night, I like like the dimly lit vibe. But since using this, no. <laughs> It's been making me get way less eye strain. It's making me read way more. Like I find I can stay focused way longer when this is lighting the page. I have the high definition light. I have the cordless one. So it's really easy to move about. This one comes with a dimmer. I don't know if you can see, but you can brighten and uh, darken the light. So yeah, I've been loving it. And I think it's the perfect gift for yourself to ask for or to get for someone else for Christmas. Like I think this would be such a great thing for a reader to have. I've loved, I can't like tell you how much I love using it you guys I love it so much so I have the best deal I have a wonderful deal you guys <laughs> so if you use the code MEG22 when you buy any light in the serious light range which is the high definition light the Alex light or the classic light you will get a free compact light valued at 150 pounds 150 pounds a free light that you're getting this code also includes free international shipping so I know a lot of you in the US some of you have said to me before I'd love to get it but I'm in the US this code gives you free international shipping and they make all their lights so whichever a plug you need at the end they can do with you a US plug a European plug they can do literally any plug that you could want um, on the lights as well so that's that problem solved and any purchase in the serious lights range you will get a free compact light which I just think is an incredible deal anyway I'm actually on reading with my patrons and our sprint is just about to end so I'll talk to them briefly and then I'll come back to you and <laughs> chat about the Twyford code let's chat the Twyford Code. So I am halfway through. Now, this is by the author of The Appeal. That one is a murder mystery told through emails. This one is a murder mystery told entirely through like audio files, like a phone recording, someone recording themselves talking into their phone, essentially. Basically the plot is our main character is a guy who's just got out of prison. He's been in and out of crime pretty much all his life and he's just gone out of prison and he remembers a time that he found this book and his teacher took it off him and it turned out to be a book by Edith Twyford, who is very, it's very much based off Edith, Edith, Edith Blyton. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> That is not correct. Enid Blyton. Oh my God. Okay. So it was this book and his teacher was like, it's banned. But she became very interested in it and took this class, there's like six of them, on a school trip and then disappeared. But like, he doesn't have very good memory of what happened. Like, we got home somehow. Did she drive us home or did one of us drive the van home? He doesn't know what happens. But after that, it seems like she maybe went missing. And it seems like there's a code in her books maybe this author's books that he wants to investigate now it does say on the front it's time to solve the murder of the century there hasn't really been a murder yet unless the teacher has been murdered <laughs> like there hasn't i wouldn't call it the murder of the century if like the murder hasn't we haven't got a dead body yet <laughs> I mean now originally because this is all audio files I was gonna get the audiobook but the audiobook is one narrator whereas this feels like the perfect kind of book that they should have a full cast like it should be a full cast and also at the start of every entry and there's quite a lot can you see is it gonna focus so it says audio file it says the date and time and it says the audio quality and apparently from my research that I did when I was <laughs> seeing whether I should buy the audiobook or not. It says all of those before each audio file and I was like, oh, I'll just get annoyed at that. Like I hate when I'm listening to an audiobook and like stuff is read out that I, you don't, like when you see it on the page, you kind of scan it, but you don't read it properly. Um, and I can just imagine that getting really annoying. So I, I didn't get the audiobook in the end, but I am enjoying this. I'm really enjoying it. Now, the main thing I have to talk about is like the style of writing, cause it's very different. The idea is that these audio files have been transcribed by a software. And so some things it gets wrong. So like, 
gun gun like gunner like i'm gonna do this it keeps being described as gun a the teacher is called miss isles and it keeps being transcribed as missiles there's loads of stuff so occasionally like things don't make sense you realize that's because the words are wrong and that's so it's a very interesting reading experience because you have to kind of like get used to it and i feel like this is the kind of book you need to sit down and read in one go because every time you put it down and pick it back up again it takes you a while to get used to the writing style so i'm hoping to read the second half tonight really because it doesn't take long to read once you get going once you get going it's such a quick read but i find that when i'm picking up like for short bursts each time it takes me ages to get into it but it's a very unique way of telling the book and I really like our main character you know he's an older man who's been and out of prison who struggles with reading and he's a very interesting perspective to read from so I'm really enjoying him and it's reminding me I when I did drama at A level I loved drama one of the plays that we performed was called Little Revolution I think and that was a verbatim play so the the author of the play author <laughs> had gone round during that they were set during the 2011 riots in London and had gone and recorded conversations on her phone and that was such fun to to perform because it's like it you have to say it as it's written and like you have to make sure people talk over each other when when they're talking over each other in your life and so it's just reminding me a lot of that i really admire what janice hallett is doing in the murder mystery world because her books are so different than what anyone else is doing like she is very special and um <laughs> I really, she's special. She's doing something different. She's coming at us with the mixed media vibes and she she's imaginative. Even if it's, I don't know if it's gonna be five stars. At the moment, it's like a strong four, you know? I'm really, really enjoying it. And I think actually like me not loving the appeal, thinking it was gonna be five stars, actually is like putting me in better stead with her books afterwards because I'm kind of just going into them with an open mind and whatever happens happens versus the appeal I had like the biggest hopes and dreams for it. Yeah anyways I'm gonna try and finish this off tonight and I will let you in the morning what I thought of it but it's very interesting they're trying to hack they're trying to figure out this code but like you're having to infer a lot because you're not getting told like a lot of stuff happens off page and also when you are reading stuff it can get a bit confusing so I don't know, it's just very, very unique. So yeah, I'll see you in the morning with my thoughts. So I finished The Twyford Code and I would say for the majority of the book, I was thinking, okay, this is a four star. This is a four star, right? But the ending, <laughs> the ending is a five star ending. It's one of my favorite endings I've read so far this year. Like I think just the way that I... <laughs> Sorry, I've just got to take a moment. This is just amazing. <laughs> goosebumps thinking about it the way that the ending comes together and like that because of the ending this is the kind of book you want to reread like 10 times like I think this could be such a fun book to come back to and reread I loved the ending like this book is ah, it makes me want, like I ooh, you know when you just can't I have and, <laughs> I was supposed to be making lunch and I was like okay no lunch is not gonna get made I need to finish this book and it's like it's so clever. It was such a good ending. So I'm going to give this a 4.5 overall. It's not quite a five, but I definitely prefer the sea appeal. I just thought the ending, like, it's so clever. <laughs> I really enjoyed the different style of story. You know, the fact that it, this is like verbatim written is really interesting. And um, I just got quite emotional at the end. Like the ending and the way... Ah, it's really hard not to spoil anything because I really feel like the ending makes this book but just the way it's like a really it's just a really clever book it's a really clever book I think if you liked the appeal you'll like this even more I genuinely feel like that like, because the ending really reveals so much about the rest of the book that you didn't realize right I love when a book does that there's some Agatha Christie's that I could mention but I'm not going to I don't want to get into spoiler territory but there's just like when a book has a clever ending that makes you rethink the way you felt about the rest of the book is so 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 good i loved it now there is something i want to talk about and it's is this a murder mystery i say no <laughs> not a good day okay 
Now this back bitch to is the shaking the table. <laughs> now, I thought long and hard before I filmed this about how I was gonna speak about this to you without spoiling anything because people get like upset about spoilers. So if you care, I'll put the timestamp below where I finish talking about this. But I'm I have tried really hard in the way that I'm gonna frame this and talk about this to not spoil anything for you, okay? So I think you're in safe hands. But if you care, you can skip ahead. So this is a missing person mystery, right? You open the book and you get told that these audio files have been found on a phone of a recently reported missing person, right? That's where they've come from. And then the rest of the book goes into the audio files. Now, missing person mysteries can, in my opinion, be murder mysteries, right? The example I think of first is The Paris Apartment by Lucy Foley. I class that as a murder mystery in that our main character has gone to Paris and her brother is missing and she is trying to investigate has he been killed or has he gone missing another way right there's no body you know he's missing but she's trying to figure out you know him being killed is a real possibility because of the way that this is written where you're just told at the beginning these audio files have been found here of this missing person and then almost the whole book the book's like 360 pages and up until page 320 the whole book is these audio files of the person you know the guy our protagonist who you assume is the missing person because it's his phone it's him in the past contemporaneously describing the situation of him trying to solve the Twyford Code, right? Trying to figure out what the truth behind this code in these kids' books is. And then at the end, just like in The Appeal, there's an investigation, right? Now, The Appeal is a murder mystery because <laughs> at the beginning you're told there has been a murder, there's a body, right? And you're gonna get all the emails of the suspects and then there's gonna be, you're gonna investigate it at the end. This is similar and you get all the audio files and then there's like an investigation at the end of going, right, what does that mean? What does that mean for the mystery? But in the appeal there's a body <laughs> and in this there's not a body. Now, of course it still can be a murder mystery. I'm not saying whether there's death at the end of this or not, but like because the book doesn't start off with like there's a body, because it starts off with there's a missing person and then almost the entirety of the book is that person and talking to us to call it the murder of the century is just untrue <laughs> that's the thing i think i object to like it's it's tenuous for me whether this could be classed as a murder mystery or not the fact like it says it on the front and then on the inside it's time to solve the murder of the century I don't think that can be, I don't think it can be cast as the murder of the century if we don't get a body at the beginning. I don't think I've spoiled anything there. I really have tried not to. But yeah, missing person mysteries can be murder mysteries. But I think because of this, the way this is framed, I don't, I, I wouldn't class it as that. So. <laughs> Listen, we swapped this into the vlog so that I would actually read a murder mystery. And it's like, it's tenuous. You can tell the girls are annoyed, but... What a shame. I loved this. It's so multi-layered. It's so, like when you get into it, like I said, it takes you a while to get used to the style of writing. But once you get into it, like it reads so fast and it's just so clever. I loved the ending of this. So yeah, 4.5. And I do like, actually, I know I've been speaking for forever, but <laughs> I do like how Janice Hallett's books have that investigation at the end where like, okay, someone has gone through all the material that we've just gone through because it makes you feel like a detective because then when the investigation is happening and then you're like, you feel like you're going through it with them. So I am so excited. Janice Hallett's next book comes out in January and I'm so excited for it because it's mixed, mixed media, right? I think that's what held this back from being a five even though i understand why this is all audio files the next one is going to be a mix of like interviews emails whatever like it's going to be all types of mixed medias and it's about a cult i believe so i'm really 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 excited i'm probably gonna read that in january i'm just like I'm really excited. But yeah, really glad I finally read this. I am now, we're saving The Bullet the Mist for last because I <laughs> feel ready to read it. So we're gonna have a nice quick fun time with Peril End House by Agatha Christie and I'm very excited. <laughs>
So I am halfway through Parallel End House. I've just been listening to the audiobook whilst I cooked and then got ready. Listen, I'm enjoying it, but Hastings. <laughs> and now I want to sit back and relax and enjoy my evening. When all of a sudden I hear this agitating, grating voice. I, I don't like him. Don't like you, Hastings. Sorry, no offense if you see <laughs> If you don't know, Hastings is a character who's friends with Poirot and he narrates a lot of the early Poirot books. And I was like, I, was, I forgot, I forgot. <laughs> it's part of his personality and part of the running joke that he's like a pompous man of society, I guess, who is like kind of stupid and he's always wrong. Like with whatever he thinks is happening in the mystery, he's like very, very wrong. So usually if Hastings like really likes someone, usually. <laughs> suspect them. But I've looked it up and he only narrates like the next one, Lord Edward Dyer's, and the ABC Murders, and then one right at the end. So I'm almost out. Yeah, I just like, I just prefer the ones he's not in. I'm sorry, Hastings. <laughs> but let's talk about the plot. So basically, uh, Hastings on Pryor on a little, little boy's holiday, little cuties <laughs> by the sea. And they meet this woman who's like, I just have the worst luck. I keep like getting into these accidents. And Pryor's like, Girl. And it becomes clear someone's trying to kill the girl. And so it starts off not as a murder mystery, but as like a, a attempted murder mystery, because these all have been attempts to kill her. Around the 80 page mark, so I'm like 120 pages in, because these are really short, right? Like 240 pages. Around 80 pages in, there is a murder. I was thinking like, it's gonna be a little strange if this is just an attempted murder mystery, because that's not Agatha's style. I'm like, at least one person dies <laughs> in a Christie book. And I'm enjoying it. It's not gonna be my favorite Agatha Christie, but it's just like such an easy read, right? Such a fun time. They're really comfort reads for me. They're tiny. And it's just fun to see how she does it. I'm intrigued to see where the story's gonna go, but like, it's just the fact that it's Hastings. <laughs> and the fact that he narrates it too, and you're just like stuck in his head, I'm like, oh, for fuck's sake. Like, <laughs> get out of here, Hastings. But I mean, I'm still enjoying it. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish it. It won't take me long, it'll take me like an hour or something. And I'll let you know what I think. I finished Parallel End House, and I'm gonna give this 3.5 stars, which is like very unusual. I enjoyed this, right? I, I felt like it was just like a cozy, enjoyable read, you know? It didn't require much brain work. It was just fun to be reunited with Praro, but it's unusual because I feel like the more I think about it, I either give Agatha Christie like a low rating or a high rating. <laughs> you know, it's either five stars, Murder on the Orient Express, Death on the Nile, Murder Roger Ackroyd, or it's like low, low, like the big four, Mystery of the Blue Train, like, mm. <laughs> All of the Agatha Christie stands coming at me for saying that. Clap if you find it offensive, clap. But I feel like this was just, a, you know, early Christie at her best. You know, it's set in this stately home, stately home murder mystery with this kind of like likable but unlikable cast of characters, like group of friends who seemingly hate each other. I just really enjoyed it. And I thought the reveal was really good. I did not predict the reveal, but it was like, it was good Christie where like, once you once the reveal has happened and it's been explained, you're like, how did I not notice that? Like, it's so annoying. The thing I enjoyed probably most about this was Praro was really funny in this book. <laughs> Praro can be a funny character, right? Because he's like, and this is where the Kenneth Branagh recent adaptations fail to, to show him off in his best light. I haven't watched the David Suchet um, like adaptations yet, but I do really want to. But Praro is fairly like, oh, what's the word? I, I don't know how to describe it. Like, vain? <laughs> Both in terms of his, like, you know, ability as a detective but also his appearance and stuff and um I don't know he was just funny like he was Poirot was funny in this book also he kept dunking on Hastings and I'm here for that like <laughs> drag her slay her read her sipping on that treaty hunty he kept just telling Hastings how stupid he is all the time and I loved it. I would really recommend if you want to get into Agatha Christie, the audiobooks are really, really good. And yeah, this had a lot of good, a lot of good twists. I'm very excited to read the next one, which is Lord Edgware Dies, and then I'll do a reread of Murder on Norwin Express. So I feel like I'm in a good, a good place for getting through my prior. Listen, it's a lifelong journey. I'm literally like up here in the list and I've got all of this to read. But I am not in a rush, you know? When I read an Agatha, it's a fun time. It's almost like a palate cleanser. And I really enjoyed it. But like, I feel like a four star for me, like I have to be like, oh my God, like 
really enjoyed that. Whereas, I don't know, this just wasn't quite there. I was just like reading it passively in a way. It's not like a disappointed 3.5. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, 3.5, you know? Oh, also I just wanna say, I haven't mentioned this, but I'm gonna start doing it for all of my vlogs. I just made an affiliate shop or something <laughs> with bookshop.org, which is, this isn't sponsored or anything, I've just made <laughs> the thing and I'm letting you know about it. Yeah, it's like this website where if you buy books, it supports independent bookshops. And I've made uh, a shop on there and I'm gonna make lists of all the books that are in every vlog. Each time I make a vlog, there'll be a link in the description. If you wanna go purchase a book I've mentioned, through that link, it will go towards independent bookshops and I'll also get a little bit of a kickback from it being an affiliate link. So I just thought I'd let you know. I'll probably mention it a few more times here and there because it's like a new thing I'm doing. Um, I've never really done like affiliate links or anything, but like, I don't know, if I'm recommending you a book and you wanna go buy it, go buy it from there and support an independent bookshop at the same time and it helps me out a bit. So, you know. We're all win-win. <laughs> now we're gonna start the bullet, I feel sick. We're gonna start the bullet that missed by Richard Osman. I'm nervous because, I mean, I don't know why I'm nervous. I'm very excited, but like, you know, I wanna love it really bad. <laughs> I do really wanna love it. This is the third in the Thursday Metal Club series. I'm scared there's only gonna be one more. From everything I've read, he signed up for four books and I know he started writing a different series. So that doesn't bode well for me and my emotions. <laughs> so like, once I've read this, we're over halfway through the series, which I really don't like. But yeah, this is a murder mystery series following a group of characters at a retirement village who get up to hijinks. It's a lot of fun. I will try in my discussions not to spoil the first two. But yeah, I'm gonna try and read the first 100 pages tonight. How long is it? About, okay, 420 pages. I would like to read the first 100 pages tonight and check in with you. It is a fairly quick read, so I don't think it will take me that long. Oh, that's convenient. Part one is up to page page 97. Part two starts on page 101 because of the page break. So I will read part one and I'll get back to you. So I have read the first 100 pages of The Bullet in the Mist and I'm really enjoying it. I haven't even thought about what I'm gonna say to you. I've just turned up. I literally <laughs> got to that point. Reading this book and reading this series, it just feels like a warm hug, going back to old friends, coming home. I love it so much. It's just so comforting and just brings me so much joy and I'm already just in love. I don't know what to say to you. You know, each of the books in the Thursday Murder Club series follow the Thursday Murder Club investigating a different murder mystery. And this one's an interesting one because it is a murder that happened many years ago. It's a cold case of this young TV producer who was investigating a fraud case and she died, we think. <laughs> she basically was seen on CCTV like in her car with a an unidentified passenger in it. And uh, then that car was found driven off the side of a cliff with blood in it and her clothes in it, but no body. And it's assumed that her body uh, was thrown from the car when it was pushed off the cliff by whoever killed her. I'm here to investigate and find out what had happened. Um, and they're collaborating with like the local, I love this, so someone who studied journalism and like had to pay attention to like local BBC news. <laughs> she was like a presenter for that. And they're trying to collaborate with the guy who's like, oh my God, there's so many of these guys in England. <laughs> We're like, he's the older guy who's been on the TV, the news, like local news station for years. But like, he's never made it bigger than that, but he's like so well known. Like he's like that guy. So he thinks he's great. Cause he's always just like, newsing it up, you know? But like, I don't know how to describe it. Anyway, so they're like collaborating with him and stuff from the past couple books is also kind of coming back to bite them in the ass, which is interesting. I feel like the first book was pretty self-contained, so not much of it bled over into second book, but I feel like stuff from the second book is bleeding into this one. How cute is a little foxy? But I just love it. I love the writing. I think Rich Dosman's writing is 
so, so, so good, you know? I always say to people, although he is like a celebrity author in a way, his background, I didn't realize to quite, sorry, my chair is very squeaky, uh, to quite what extent, but he, before he was like presenting in TV, was a TV, was producer the right word? Like he'd go to TV companies and pitch them ideas for shows and he came up with so many famous show ideas. Let me try and find some examples for you, like really well-known TV shows, he came up with them and then he ended up doing some presenting. This is Wikipedia, so like take a grain of salt. Whose line is it anyway? Total wipeout, uh, deal or no deal? <laughs> I don't know if he came up with those ones or if he was just enjoy, um, involved in working with them. But he can write, you know? He's a clever man and the stuff that these books say about life and about loving other people, and although it's about mad mystery, <laughs> you know, loving other people and mortality, because obviously it's elderly characters and I feel like because of that, it can afford to give some really insightful looks at what life really means and what we should be paying attention to and what we should be thankful for and that's part of the big reason why I love it. I love these characters. These books are just like home for me, you know? I love them. I love them. I'm having the best time. So it's like half nine. I want to read to maybe like page 250 so I'm probably gonna read what I can tonight, go out for a nice walk in the morning, then come back and settle down and read some more of it. <laughs> That's my, that's my big plan for tomorrow. So I will see you in the morning once I've read a bit more. Fifty pages in and I'm still loving it. I think I prefer this to the second one. I mean the second one was five stars so like <laughs> it's not really you know a competition. Five stars is five stars but I think that I am enjoying this even more. What is fun about this one is that okay so we have had <laughs> like a second I don't know if you'd call it a mystery but like you know, big plot incident that the plot is revolving around happened. But I'm not gonna tell you about it because I don't wanna spoil anything. <laughs> I think it's hinted at in the synopsis. It's to do with Elizabeth's past, who's one of our main girlies. You know, we've got Elizabeth Joyce, Ron and Ibrahim. And it's like to do with Elizabeth's past and stuff that happened in the second book. So it's a bit more like thrillery. So it's like, it's making me a bit tense. I feel worried, right? The thing is, <laughs> With a series with old characters, people gotta die at some point. <laughs> and we're also in very difficult, uh, you know, dangerous situations. So I'm just like, wow, I'm really, fi I'm scared we're gonna have a death. Like we've had deaths before in the first and second books, but I'm scared we have a death that's gonna like, get me emotionally <laughs> in the, in the, at the end of this book. I did cry, but I like constrained it. Cause I was like, I've just done my makeup. Like this has to last until I finish the book tonight. <laughs> I'm absorbing so much. I'm an empath. I absorb it all. But that's the thing I always say about this series. You know, it will have you crying one second and laughing the next. And it's just such an amazing look at the human psyche and the human, <laughs> you know, the way that we feel and the way that we want to be loved and like just everything about humanity, I think it puts such a lens up to us also being humorous and being about, you know, murder mystery. I think also I am enjoying, like the other, the main thing I told you about is a cold case they're investigating. And I like that it's a cold case. A lot in the other books we've had like a murder or something at the beginning of the book, like something that's happening to them in their real life at that moment and they're kind of investigating it. Whereas I like that it's a cold case because it like, they're unable to draw on as much information. They're really having to like, try and make links between people or like this is years and years ago right the truth can get buried over a decade and so they're really trying to have to sift through people's memories and and what people could possibly have slipped up with 10 years ago to try and uncover this so i'm really enjoying that angle of it i'm intrigued i feel like the two things that are now happening need to connect somewhat for the book to feel like truly whole and so I'm a bit nervous and intrigued as to how that's gonna happen. But yeah, I'm just gonna go ahead and go sit downstairs. Actually, I'm gonna have dinner now, but then after that, I am just gonna go finish this book and I could not be more excited. Hi.
Hawaii, 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 Hawaii. Sorry, I'm just sorting out the wires. <laughs> so it's very late, but I just finished The Bullet That Missed by Richard Osman. Five stars. I loved it. <laughs> loved it so much i just oh this series it's just a treat right it makes me want to cry in fact i did cry i cried more if you've read the series it's always i both instances in this book where i cried were with stephen elizabeth's husband who i don't want to say anything because i don't know what you know in the first book but like <laughs> i'm not gonna cry okay what happened Maybe I'll cry. I would just describe, I would turn to my parents about it downstairs. My mum has read this and she loved it, loves them as well. Um, but I was like describing it, talking about it. <laughs> the scene in the end. <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about it though. Like I cried like, like torrential tears in the first book and I haven't the second and third. And I feel like that's because in the first one, I was just unprepared for like the sheer show of humanity that was about to <laughs> take place. And just like, I know I keep saying it, but like the compassion that these books have and the heart and the soul, like, I just don't think I was prepared for that. I was, I didn't know what I was letting myself in for. Whereas now I know the tone, like I know what's coming. So I can kind of like, I guess, anticipate it better. But, <laughs> I mean, listen, I love it. If you've ever thought about picking up the Thursday Murder Club series, I would 100% recommend you do. I really hope we're going to get more than just one more book. It's, I feel like it's either going to be one more or two more. But this series can't go on forever, you know? Because <laughs> part of the, the beauty of it is knowing that you don't have, like, your whole life ahead of you anymore and being grateful for what you do have and finding joy in the now and the today. And I just think these are just some of my favourite books because they teach you so much about life without being, like this is a book that's going to teach you about life. Do you know what I mean? It sells it to you as, it sells it to you as a murder mystery. It has a great murder mystery, but then there's always something more. And I loved it. I love it so much. So yeah, five stars. When I say this is my favorite book of the year, when I babble is still my fable. <laughs> it's still my favorite book of the year, but I would say this is probably going to be top 10, whereas I don't think the second one is going to be. I reckon this is going to be somewhere in the top 10. I don't know. I haven't really sat down and thought about that yet. I'm keeping it a surprise for myself to figure out at the end of the year what my top 10 favorite books of the year are, but it's in my my content calendar. It's coming. I know when it's coming. That day is approaching. God, everyone, are you excited for Christmas? Because I am so excited for all the content I've got coming up. The next vlog I'm starting on, you guys are going to be so excited for. I've got like, a lot of Christmas vlogs coming, wrapped ups coming back. I don't know why I'm talking to you about this at the end of the video, but yeah, I'm just super excited for everything and this, I just loved it. So yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed the vlog, me reading Three Murder Mysteries. It was a very successful vlog actually, a 4.5, a 3.5 and a 5. Like that is pretty successful for a vlog. I really enjoyed my time reading all of these books. So let me know if you've read any of them, if you want to read any of them, if you want to get your hands on any of them, you can check out my bookshop.org shop down below. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you got into the end of the video, comment the dagger. Or like, I think it's called a kitchen knife emoji. <laughs> Comment down below if you got to the end. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you very soon in another video. Bye.